The spinner below is spun three times. If the spinner lands on a border, that spin does not count and another spin is made. You may assume that it's equally likely that the spinner will land in each of the six sectors. Find the probability of spinning blue on the first spin, cyan on the second spin, and red on the third spin. So let's maybe make some notes here off to the side. So we have six different regions that we can land in. Okay, and three of those are red. So the probability of red would be three over six, or we can change to one half. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. The probability of blue, since there are two blue regions out of the sixth, would be, we can leave it as two sixths or one third. And the probability of cyan, there's one out of six there. All right, so the probability of spinning blue on the first spin, so blue on the first, it's one out of three chance. Cyan on the second, these events are happening independent of one another. Usually when you have uh, dependent events, you have some way of removing an item from your sample space with each, uh, with each trial. But here, you can't remove any sector of the, of the spinner. The, all six regions will always be there when you spin. So these events are happening independent. So cyan on the second spin is one sixth. Red on the third spin, there's three red regions out of six, which we said was one half. So uh, in the numerator, one times one times one is just one. In the denominator, uh, that would be 6 times 6, or 36. If we make that a probability, 1 over 36 is 0 0.028. Find the probability of spinning cyan on the first spin, cyan on the second spin, and red on the third spin. So cyan on the first is one sixth, cyan on the second is one sixth, and red on the third is one half. So one in the numerator, six times six is 36, times two is 72. So one over 72 gives me 0 0.014. Find the probability of spinning cyan on every spin. So again, we are spinning three times. Okay, that was a constant throughout the problem. So if we want cyan on every spin, we can either do one sixth times one sixth times one sixth, or we can take one sixth and raise it to the third power. So one sixth raised to the third power is 0 